Okay, in part three, I'm gonna show you how to break down the customer lifetime value for SaaS. So the setup here is that we have a B2B SaaS business with implementation revenue. So customers pay us some implementation fees to customize the product, and then after that point, they pay us a subscription to receive the product on a monthly basis. So here you can see we have an income statement, and just as a reference point, we are saying that in this month, we onboarded six new customers, and then our total customer count, including those six customers, was 96 active customers within the month. So here you can see the revenue. We have implementation revenue of $48,000. So that was related to onboarding those six customers. Then we had total subscription revenue of 206. Then we had some discounts and also uh, the refunds. So next we have our COGS, implementation costs, customer service, and credit card processing fees. This is a very typical cost of sales breakdown for a SaaS business, and that's 48,000. So our total gross profit for the, cut for the company is 184,000 at a 79% gross profit margin. Also split out the subscription side of the business and the implementation side of the business because the implementation would have a, probably a lower gross profit margin. So I wanna see the gross profit margin of the pure subscriptions. So here I said, let's leave out the implementation revenue and let's just pull in the subscriptions, discounts and refunds, which would all be related to the subscriptions. So that's $184,000 in revenue. And then hosting would be related to the subscriptions, customer service, credit card processing fees. So that's 25,000 of COGS. So you can see that our gross profit here is 159 at 86%. And with subscription revenue, you wanna be, uh, have at least an 80% gross profit margin uh, if you're running a SaaS product. And then for the implementation revenue, we had the 49,000 of implementation revenue. We're saying that we paid our internal staff $23,568 to do the implementation. So the margin on that revenue is about 52%. Okay. And you'll see below why we needed to break this apart to, to get to the bottom of our customer lifetime value. So first off, I wanna understand what is our implementation revenue per customer? So here we had uh, $48,000 divided by the six customers that represented that implementation revenue. Then we know the gross profit was 52%. So we have our gross profit divided by the six customers. So that's 4,000. $233 of gross profit, implementation gross profit per customer. Now we have our subscription revenue per customer. So we have our total subscription revenue divided by the total customers. Sorry, this is the total. Now we have our subscription revenue per customer. So we have the 184 divided by our total customers, which is 96. This is how many customers are on subscriptions. <clears throat> And then here we can see the 159,000 of gross profit from subscriptions divided by the 96. So total subscription gross profit per customer is 16.58. Okay, so now we have sort of our monthly revenue and monthly gross profit per customer, which we were talking about up above. So we have the first couple pieces of this. So now we need the average length of the customer lifetime. So in order to get the average length with the subscription business, you generally need to look at the churn rate, which is the monthly cancellation rate for your customers. So in our case, we're saying that the monthly churn rate is 1.8%. So in any given month, roughly, we are losing about 1.8% of our customers. So here is how to calculate the average customer lifetime. What you do is you just take one and you divide it by the churn rate. This is a uh, formula that's brought from statistics. And so what you would see in this scenario is the average customer has a lifetime of 56 months. So if we're losing 1.8% of our customers per month, the typical customer will be um, buying our subscription for an average of 56 months. Now, if we wanted to convert this into years, we would just take the 56 and we would divide it by 12. Keep a close eye uh, on whether you're provided a churn rate that's a monthly churn rate or an annual churn rate because you're gonna have to convert the result either back into years or from years back into months. So now let's think about the total customer lifetime values. This is the total gross profit we make 
on our lifetime relationship with the customer. So first off, we know that we have uh, 1658 of gross profit per month from subscriptions times a 56 month average lifetime. So we make about 92,000 on uh, profit from subscriptions. But we also make a little bit of profit on implementations, but remember implementations just go on for one month. So the implementation gross profit per customer is $4,233. So the total customer lifetime value uh, are, are just these two buckets added together. So that's $96,316 of customer lifetime value for this SaaS business. Mm -hmm.